Whenever I go to new places, I always like to ask people who have been there before, what is the first thing you would do when you step off the plane if you were to go back? For this trip to Japan, it's one of the places we've actually already been. We spent about three weeks there five years ago. So this trip was super fun for us. We had to relive our favorite experiences and go back and visit things we passed over the first time. And some of them are dumb little things. Like for me, first thing I'm doing when I land, I'm taking a train into Tokyo Station, wandering around that basement with all the restaurants and going to the Calbee Plus. If you don't know, Calbee makes these freeze-dried potato stick snack things, almost like potato chips. But at this Calbee Plus store, they make them fresh. So you're eating like fresh French fries with the seasoning they use for those potato chips. And it's so good. It's the one thing I miss the most. You gotta try them. And once we left the station, the first place we actually went is the Don Quixote. These Don Quixote stores are insane and chaotic. We went to the one right by Scramble Crossing, so it's also so crowded. If you've never been to Scramble Crossing, it's one of the coolest places. It's basically right in the center of a lot of transit in Tokyo. There's a lot of things to do in the area. So you get to this crosswalk and there's seriously thousands of people crossing all different directions. And the funny thing now is everyone's filming themselves as they cross too. It's a major tourist attraction. Okay, so we landed in Japan. We hit up some of the spots that are on the way back to our hotel, but first full day in Japan, where do we go? Akihabara, of course. This area is so cool. I don't know what I can say that hasn't already been said, but we just love wandering around, going to all the different figure stores, seeing what's available. You can spend a fortune here picking up stuff you think is cool, but fortunately for us, we only have limited bag room. So we just pick and choose a couple things. So many videos and so much information on Akihabara. I won't go into too much detail, but if you're into like anime culture stuff, you just got to keep an eye out for Ami Ami, A Stop, Akiba Culture Zone, and all the random figure shops as you walk around that'll sell used figures. You also just find random stuff. Like there was this pop-up we walked into called Endall. I don't really know what it was for, but it had a bunch of really cool art and character designs. And also in Akihabara, they have a bunch of themed cafes that we thought about popping into, but we didn't. But we walked past Monster Hunter cafes, Final Fantasy cafes, Dragon Quest cafes. But one of the greatest parts about Akihabara is really kind of its core or its roots. It's known as Electric Town because it's the place you go to buy used electronics. I feel like this is maybe less talked about now. Japanese used electronics are really great prices and they have a culture of really taking care of and respecting their products. So everything is in such good condition. I bought a PlayStation Vita for $100 back in 2015 and it was seriously in perfect condition. It's way cheaper than anything I could find in the US and it's kind of become a collectible now. So I swear it's like gone up in value since I bought it. But Japan is the king of used electronics, camera lenses, etc. So anything on your list in that kind of vein, you'll be able to find it here. And the shopkeepers are super nice. When I bought my Vita, they even helped me change the language to English and you'll probably get it tax free. So a lot of benefits. I really recommend this area. And another part of Japan I really missed was the fast food, which sounds kind of dumb, but they have a couple chains you got to try. They make these donburi bowls, which are basically like a marinated meat and onions served over some rice. And they'll sell them with a bunch of other toppings too, but they're so cheap and they're so delicious and they're so fast. Never any shame popping in one of these chains for a quick meal. So our hotel was in the Ginza area, which was an area we'd never been to before. Ginza is kind of like the shopping district of Tokyo, I guess. So, you know, we went to the famous Ginza 6 mall with all the luxury brands. We also bought a bunch of stuff at the Uniqlo World headquarters because I love Uniqlo and everything's way cheaper here. Ginza is pretty centrally located, so it's not a bad place for a hotel. And there's a ton of restaurants that are kind of off street level that are really delicious. It has a really different vibe from the rest of Tokyo. I would describe it as maybe a bit more upscale. And one thing I wanted to do this time around, Tiffany doesn't eat fish, so we never had sushi last time I was here, but this time I really wanted to try some. So I got some takeout sushi from this restaurant in Ginza. It's like a little sushi counter on like the fifth floor of some building. And even though the streets of Ginza seemed relatively deserted, you know, for Tokyo standards, I went up there and the place was packed when I went to pick up my order. And by the way, the sushi was amazing, like best sushi I've ever eaten. All right, I've thrown in a couple more weird recommendations. We got back to the hotel after a day in Akihabara and Ginza and we threw on the TV. You can find some crazy stuff. Here's a channel where they film this cat while news scrolls across the screen. And I'm also gonna sprinkle in my convenience store recommendations. First one is these pizza buns. I love these things. I was gonna try one when I go back. It's never a bad time for some pizza sauce and some cheese and a delicious bun. Everybody knows about the convenience store fried chicken, which is also delicious and you should try it. But sometimes for the hot food, you just want a little pizza bun. On the next day, we decided to go to the Asakusa area. We never went last time for one main reason. Last time we had a JR pass and it gives you somewhat limited access to the subway system and Ginza and Asakusa are kind of not really on any JR lines. You really need to take a Tokyo Metro train which is a different brand it sounds confusing but it's really not as long as you know ahead of time some stations are jr some of them are tokyo metro they both use the same suica card payment but the tokyo metro trains don't let you use the jr pass anyway we decided to get to asakusa early that morning because we heard it gets crowded so we beat the crowds a little bit and it's such a cool vibe very picturesque and scenic and tons of good pictures you can get with a mix of kind of old and new tokyo architecture <music> Kind 
of the last district we wanted to revisit in Tokyo itself is like the Shinjuku, Shibuya, Harajuku area. These are all clustered together, so it's kind of perfect to lump them all together. And these are some of the most populated areas in Tokyo. Lots of shopping and restaurants and bars and venues in these areas. I already talked about Scramble Crossing, but there's kind of an iconic building you'll see in every photo of Scramble Crossing, the Shibuya 109. It's filled with all these little boutiques with some of the coolest, most unique fashion I've ever seen. It's mostly women's clothes, but it's one of the only malls I'll never get bored walking around in. The style's so unique and all the shop staff are walking around wearing the clothes. It's really a sight to behold. Tiffany's always tempted to buy something from here. Now, as far as Harajuku goes, last time we came to Tokyo, we had really great memories of Harajuku. We came here almost every day, and that's because the Kalbi Plus store that's in Tokyo Station now used to be right in the center of Harajuku. Plus, like the first cat cafe I ever went to is in Harajuku. It's right by Meiji Shrine, which is another crazy area. You'll feel like you're in the middle of a forest, even though you're in one of the most dense cities in the world. But anyway, this time to me, Harajuku felt a little disappointing. I feel like maybe COVID hit place really hard. It felt so crowded, but I didn't find as much novelty in it anymore. Maybe to fresh eyes, this place would still have its appeal, but unfortunately, we didn't really find much to do there. And the last area is Shijuku, and this and Shibuya are kind of the nightlife hotspots, so we actually did an Airbnb photo shoot, so I'm going to talk about this area later when I talk about that, because it's really a totally different place at night. Now, one of my favorite parts of Tokyo is actually leaving the city and going into the countryside. very easily doable just due to how the trains are so efficient and easy to use and this time to japan we had a couple day trips on our list the big one was mount fuji we never went to mount fuji last time we went to the hakone area thinking we might be able to see it but we really couldn't you really need to go over to one of these lakes they're called the seven lake i actually really want to do the mount fuji hiking experience where you wake up early you hike to the top and you get to see the sun rise over tokyo from the peak but unfortunately i learned it's only during certain parts of the year and when we went it was like just at the end of the season so we decided to go to lake kawaguchiko instead i think some trains run there but we opted to take like a coach bus like a sleeper bus and it's a scenic bus ride it's kind of a experience of its own like driving through tokyo on those highways or driving through the hills of the countryside so i was thinking yeah mount fuji is an iconic mountain but you know at the end of the day it's just a mountain i've seen plenty of mountains but we're driving through all these hills it's like a kind of mountainous hilly area i thought ah maybe one of these mountains is mount fuji i don't really see it but all of a sudden everything clears out it's totally flat and we finally see mount fuji and it is the most picturesque mountain i've ever seen it, it completely dwarfs every mountain around it. I really didn't expect much from this. I just wanted to take another box off, but this mountain has like the perfect gradient. It's the perfect mountain. You see why it's so well known. <laughs> we didn't get to see it with any snow-capped peaks, but regardless, it was still a sight to behold. So we went around this Lake Kawaguchiko area for the afternoon. One thing I really recommend is the little boat tour. You can get really great views and photos from it. We went right at sunset. And of course, there's this famous Lawson everybody takes a picture in front of. I couldn't get a good one because there's just so many people taking the photo. But yeah, we took our photos, ate some soba noodles, wandered around the town and it was time to go home definitely recommend this trip the second day trip we took was to kamakura this is another one we skipped the first time around but all these little day trips are just so magical last time we did another countryside visit to niko which has like a bridge and some beautiful mountains we tried dango for the first time kamakura has similar vibes the big draw to the little town is the big budo or daibutsu and th this thing's obviously very scenic we went straight here and took all our photos but there's something so charming about these little suburbs they always have the dango the people are always so friendly we got some handmade nigiri for lunch and then we walked down this little shopping street right by the train station. And as an unplanned souvenir, we decided to do this ring making thing. It was honestly so cute. Me and Tiffany made each other rings. One, two, three. She made me this one. And yeah, I highly recommend this stop. It's hard to put into words just how magical these little Japanese side trips are. You just have to see it for yourself. On the way back, we got off our train at Yokohama, which is a place we stopped off at last time we were in Japan. And we had fell in love with it. It had that cute like Christmas lights at the time. It was lit up all the way to the famous little amusement park and Ferris wheel on the pier there. And we had fond memories, so we stopped off again, but we just kind of stuck to the main area this time. We didn't really do anything of note, but Yokohama has a certain little charm to it. So I thought I'd mention it. Okay, I'll break up the pace a little bit here. Another convenience store wreck, the 7-Eleven Smooth certain 7-elevens have these little smoothie machines you buy like a cup of frozen fruit pay for it scan the barcode on the cup with the machine stick it in the machine it'll add some water blend it up and bam you got a delicious smoothie it's so fresh so simple so genius i was drinking these things every day 
Okay, one final day, and then I'll give you my number one recommendation for convenience store food. So stay tuned. Our last day was just more ticking off boxes, things we never did the first time we came to Japan. Starting off early at Tsukiji Fish Market, Tiffany's favorite place as someone who doesn't need any fish. So this is an area where all the, like, the fishermen and the restaurants gather, and they negotiate prices on the day's catches. It's legendary for having all the freshest fish that all the Michelin star restaurants in the area buy their fish from. You can walk around and see these giant tunas, and even buy little sample plates of the raw fish. It's so fresh and delicious. It's a great early morning stop to start your day. And now it was tattoo day for Tiffany, which left me to kind of wander around. She got a small one this time and only took a couple of hours, but the tattoo studio is right by Tokyo Tower. Tokyo Tower is kind of an infamous like date spot. And you can see why like with the night views, it's all lit up and kind of couple-y, like there's a nice park in front of it. So it was a little sad. The one place I went without Tiffany is the famous couple spot in Tokyo, but it is nice and serene and kind of scenic. We did one more small experience. The first time we came to Japan, Tiffany became obsessed with these fake food displays outside of every Japanese restaurant. So in addition to the menus, they basically have like a display case where you can kind of preview what the food's going to look like. So we booked an experience where you make the fake food. It was in the Ikebukuro area. They teach you how to make the food. They teach you about the art of making fake food, why it became so widespread, etc. And of course, you get to make your own. They have a couple different options. You can make like a parfait. We made a ramen noodle. And it's a cute little souvenir. It was a fun time. And the people are so nice. It's just a small little business, a couple guys. Okay, and the last thing we like to do, we always like to book some kind of like local photographer or food tour. Photographers are especially fun because they really know the area. They know all the coolest spots. You'll get some really cool knowledge about the place and find some spot that most people don't know about. Like for example, he brought us to this beautiful little alley. It's called Miyashita Park, right under the Shibuya station. And it's filled with tiny little izakayas and soft lighting. I couldn't find anyone recommending this place or really even find any good pictures online. And it is such a cool area. Uh, apparently it used to be like a rundown skate park, but it was all redone as part of renovations for the 2020 Tokyo Olympic. But those Olympics were all done under quarantine. So like nobody really got to come and like see all the stuff. But we got some great photos of us scramble crossing, you know, in front of the Shibuya 109 and even Omoide Yokcho or Memory Lane. It's got its name because it's kind of supposed to resemble old Tokyo. And by that, it, I mean like in Japan, you have a restaurant and then smaller than that, you have like an izakaya, which is kind of like a bar slash restaurant. And then below that, you have something even smaller. It's like a bar with four seats at it. And this little alley is just filled with these little bars with four seats at it. It's so tight in there and everyone's kind of eating and drinking. And it's super intimate and Memory Lane is full of these little restaurants. There's a few other similar places like Golden Guy, but it's just so cool to walk through these areas. So scenic and unique. And the last stop on our photography tour was Kabukicho, which is the red light district. It's not really unsafe, but definitely a little sketchy. You'll see some stuff going on that's like a little off and there's like some scams going on, but just walking around is pretty safe. And again, it's a beautiful area. So yeah, like I said, we took more photos there. But once it was over, we asked the photographer if he had any food recommendations in the area. And he recommended this brand new complex called Kabukicho Tower. Again, this is one of those things I didn't see on any list, but it was it was so crazy inside with all the lights and music playing. It's really overstimulating, honestly. But it was brand new. It had all this food. It was super cool inside. And again, it's like one of those things you never see on any list. So booking these photographers is always a good experience. You get great shots to show all your friends. You get great insights on the area. And that's pretty much all we did in Japan. Now, I promised one more convenience store recommendation. And I saved the best one for last. Tiffany literally couldn't go a day without eating one of these. It's these little Ohio milk puddings. I don't really know how to describe them, but she made me learn how to make them at home. They're pretty straightforward. It's kind of like milk and gelatin and sugar and you bite into them and it's like kind of creamy and like the flavor is milk, but it's also kind of sweet. I don't know how to describe it. You have to try it. It's so delicious. And one bonus rack. I mentioned the milk pudding. I got to also talk about the melon pond. It's almost like a bread roll, but it has like a sugar cookie on top and it's all baked together and you eat it. It's almost like a muffin. Maybe you definitely got to try those. Too. That's my personal favorite convenience store item. And those are the highlights of our Tokyo trip. My cat has decided this video is over. If you like that, definitely check out our video on Korea. We got a few more upcoming videos. We just got back from Hong Kong. That was such a fun trip. I can't wait to share. Until next time though, peace.